You're watching the Kate Fox Show and I'm Kate Fox. And I am here today with the author, Lauren Malloy. Hello. Hello. And we, I want to say we are sitting in the lovely Sachem Public Library. Sachem Pu Public Library, Sachem. yep. Excuse me. See, I never say things right. It's okay. <laughs> I grew up around here, so I know it's Sachem. <laughs> <laughs> and Sachem is a beautiful district and a beautiful library. And, and then I, I love that we found this place. Thank you to my producer, Tommy McGuckin. Round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm so glad you could sit down with me because you have so much going on right now. Yeah, I'm juggling a lot of hats. A lot of hats. So, okay, so you have a book of poetry out. Yes, Black Dreams and Shattered Illusions is the poetry book. You have a wonderful children's book. Where Did All the Dragons Go? I illustrated it as well. Which my son loves. Oh, kids all over the country have been writing me wanting more, so I'm working on it, I swear. Oh, very exciting. Yes, Where Did All the Unicorns Go is already written. I'm just waiting on an illustrator. I'm talking to a few, but since I'm juggling so many hats, it's like, hold on, you know. That's me trying to juggle all the hats. I like that. Well, we're gonna, mention, <laughs> we're gonna mention your other books, and yes. then we're talking about your current project. Your okay. current <laughs> project. Sounds good. Uh, let's see, I also have The Very Devil Herself. That one is about the immortal cannibal who, you know, hunts and kills serial killers for the King of England. That one's a lot of gruesome, gory, fun, and historical times. Um, and I have The Storyteller of Pain. That's the one with the demons and the insane asylum and the psychiatrist has to figure out how to survive all of it without the help of a priest. Father Evil can't even save her in this one. And if you don't know Father Evil, you need to know who Father Evil is. So he's not in the book. He's an actual person. So you need to see who that is. He's but a friend of ours. We love him. Anyway. So, <laughs> and the other one that I just came out with uh, recently is The Bedtime Killer. Oh, that's right. Yes. And The Bedtime Killer is about a peeping Tom turned lust killer. So he goes from peeping in his lady's windows and, you know, the landscaper. Do you ever pay attention to the landscaper? How many shows? up or how many leave well I did once and I realized oh boy people really don't pay enough attention to these kinds of workers so I wrote a book kind of like what would happen if a peeping Tom was hired as a landscaper and then decides that just looking isn't enough anymore and touching needs to be a reality even if it kills them so the bedtime killer is about that you look how I got closer to you as I said <laughs> Gee, do I write horror or what? Uh, and that one's a lot of fun because I, I did all the research on this type of serial killer. A lust oh, killer wow. like Richard Ramirez is a very specific type, um, which is very different than, a, you know, a Bundy or, or, you know, Gacy. They're all different types of uh, serial killers and different things that make them the serial killer that they are. So in The Bedtime Killer, not only do you get to see his point of view, but you get to see it from the point of view of the victims who are like, who the hell is this guy in the first place? The point of view of the police, plus the point of view of him as a child and what caused him to snap and turn into this lust killer. And it goes round and round through every one wow. of his either peeping Tom moments or kill moments so and all three of those books are also going to be turned into movies yes i have people talking about the very devil herself to be done in london i have people that i've already said listen when i'm done with this movie i'm working on we're going to be doing the bedtime killer because it's present day it's the only one i've written that's present day wow. um the very devil herself is from 1600s through 18 1900s and um, the Storyteller of Pain is about 1920s to 1940s. So to make those as perfect as they need to be, you gotta have a lot of extra details. I mean, you can't put present day equipment in a Santa style and that's supposed to be 1940s. You have to have it legit right. So those I'm waiting on, cause you gotta have a lot of backing and all the people going, here's all the equipment. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> here you go. You know, the little green fairy <laughs> that pops up and goes, Bing! yeah, uh, the horror fairy with fangs and blood going, here's a man. Uh, yeah, yeah, horror girl, whatever. <laughs> Spooky bitch. But uh, so the bedtime killer is probably going to be one of the next ones I wow. start working on. Although I have a lot in here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have a lot in there. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. do. It's really crowded. It's. <laughs> So now, <laughs> well, you know what we're going to do? I think we're going to take a quick break. Sure. And then we're going to talk about what's really going on right this very minute. I'm excited.
we are back and now we were just talking at the break and so before we go to your big project i want to mention that you are a reiki yes you are a minister yes you do spell work yes and you are involved in all of the the sciences of of energy and just wow <laughs> well i try to balance it out with all the dark stuff i write and put out there and um, I actually became an ordained minister because of writing the Storyteller of Pain. I realized that I want my prayers to have a little extra oomph. So oh. it's not really about wanting to do weddings. I mean, if somebody wants me to do their wedding, sure. It'll go great, I promise, I'm a professional. <laughs> but I'm more about cleaning out unhealthy energies of people and places. I'm more about saying prayers over somebody and saying, okay, I have a little extra oomph because the universe blessed me as a minister as well. Plus the Reiki is to kind of send all this energy to people that, I mean, we get, we get compounded by so much negative, dark energy from people, places, you know, TV, radio, yes. childhood that winds up staying in our heads and echoing until we believe these things that we forget that we're supposed to be blessing each other and loving each other instead of showing the differences and the hate between each other in any way, shape, or form. I do it too, I'm, I'm not perfect in any way. But one of the things I strive towards is seeing all my flaws and saying, okay, I acknowledge what they are, now I gotta work through them so that they're not a flaw anymore, it becomes a strength, not a weakness. Know who you are, work from that place, and keep trying to work towards that 2.0 version of yourself. So I know my weaknesses, I know what they are, I know that I can send out a lot of anger because I have such a power source inside me. I don't want to do that. I don't want to send out hate and anger because all that does is add to it. So I became the ordained minister. I did the Reiki stuff so that every person I see, I send a little healing energy. I send a little love energy. I walk past a tree. I know it sounds, you know, hippie and cheesy. I send out energy because our planet needs it. We have so much chemtrails filling the skies and I know people don't believe me, but it's true. Um, You're so, blowing my mind. <laughs> so, you know, you know, everyone's getting these allergies and needing to take these medications. Well, if you take local honey instead of from the store, you'll fix your allergies. How do I know? I used to have to take allergy pills for years. I was dying from it. Then one day I read an article, did enough research between all the medical papers and looking up little words going, what the hell does that mean? Oh, that means that. To realize that local honey can fix all of your health issues to a, to a degree. Wow. Every one of your allergies can be fixed because the, the bees are taking all the pollen and et cetera from right around you. You get honey from Connecticut or Ohio or from wherever it is coming in from the store, that's not going to fix your allergies because that's another state. That's why when you visit another state, all of a sudden you get sniffles and allergies and this because you have different foreign bodies getting into your body, which is the same Speechless. reason same reason I do Reiki. You got all this foreign bodies hitting you, all this hate energy, all this toxicity. Well, then I walk by and go, I love you. <laughs> and what does that do? Maybe nothing to you, but at least I know I'm trying. And I'd rather try every single day with every person and place I'm at than say, I could have and I didn't. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what else to say except, you know, I, that's one of the things I do is I try to help people with their issues, let them know that there is nothing you can tell me that I will have judgment over. There is nothing that you've done in your life, whether you could have killed somebody, I'll still look at you and go, all right, but let's deal with now. <laughs> let's work on forgiveness and working through it because I believe that we've had lots of lifetimes. I probably have had too many, <laughs> but I know that in some lifetimes I was a son of a bleep. And in other lifetimes, I was trying to fix it. Well, this is one of those lifetimes I'm trying to fix all my karma from previous ones. Okay. So I want to put as much good out there as possible while still doing what I love, which is horror. I love freaking people out. You do. I do. I mean, <laughs> I really do. And then all of a sudden, I'd be like, hey, little girl, how you doing? You know, super creepy. But for no other point than it makes people laugh. And laughter should be what we're living for. Yes. And you should have a moment where you're not thinking about what happened in your life, what happened in your past, what happened in the day, what sickness is going on in your body. And that's why I write the books I write. I'm pushing out the movies I'm pushing out. Yes, it's hard, but it gives you a break from reality. It gives you a break from the bullshit in your life going, I don't love me enough. And it goes, okay, let's take a break out. You ain't having that stuff happen to you, so at least you're better than that. It gives you a bit of a break from the reality that you have to deal with. And then wow. I give you a hug and go, look, it's all cool. We could get through this. If I could get through it, you could get through it. We got this. And I think that's what we need to be doing for everybody. 
Oh, so that's what I try I to do. I agree with that. And that's why I was so speechless because what you're saying you like to put out is what we should all be putting out because that's, we're all in this together. We're all on this planet together. We're all interconnected in one way or another. Absolutely. So that's really what you just said. Yeah. And so with that, we're gonna take one more break and then we're gonna come back and talk about yield. Yeah, boy! <laughs> And now, yield. And now for yield, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Sit back and relax while we tell you the tales. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm stopping you from twisting. <laughs> yield is her current project. Yes, it is my current uh, feature horror film, Yield the Horror Movie. Uh, right now we're in the Indiegogo campaign stage, which is a lot of fun. We have uh, an amazing cast already signed up. I see you keep posting who Ooh. you're casting and what, and you've got a lot of people set up. Yes, let's see. Um, and it, it really has been this kind of miracle where each person, okay, going back a tiny little bit, when I, before I wrote The Very Devil Herself, I knew I wanted to write the books I wrote, and then I wanted to start making horror movies. Okay. So when I went to my very first con with The Very Devil Herself, I was already telling everybody, listen, in about five years, I'm going to start making horror movies. <laughs> Remember this conversation because I'm going to come to you and be like, I wasn't kidding. Are you in? And so then, you know, like five years later, I was like, see, I wasn't kidding. Are you in? And they were wow. like, yeah. Or um, Jim Crute, uh, Jim Crutt, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Jim Crutt from uh, Dawn of the Dead. He's uh, going to be in the film as Pa, one of the That's lead right. killers, which is great. Um, let me explain about Yield. Yield is a couple decides to go hiking in a national forest on vacation. When they get inside, they realize that the forest has a lot more going on than just trees and mm -hmm. shrubbery. Um, it winds up being a cat and mouse labyrinth of catch em and kill em with a hillbilly family called Carnigo. So what happens is the couple disappears inside this national forest and two of their friends realize the last picture that was ever taken was before they went in. We can't hear from them. We're going to go get them. So they go down to go get their friends out of this Solaris National Forest and wind up meeting the Carnico clan. Oh. So there's Jim Crutt. There's Jeremy Ambler. There's Lion Beckwith. There's Alyssa Booth. There's Bryden De Janeiro. Um, oh my God, there's so many names. Uh, <laughs> and the list goes on. We really are having a wow. phenomenal team show up. And it was one of those things where um, Rusty Gilligan, uh, he, he's amazing. And in each case, each person I was telling about this to, and, I was, and they wanted to be a part of it. So I was really blessed that they were like, this sounds awesome, we want in. Um, and now I have all these wonderful people. Um, I'm even having... Um, Beatrice uh, Sniper for, oh. uh, she's won so many awards for her special effects. Yeah, well she did special effects. Tommy was in uh, Endangered, which was yes. Theater of Terror. And oh, Theater of the Terror is did epic. the uh, special effects. Oh yeah, she's amazing. She's won so many awards for all her talent, so I'm so blessed to have all these people on board. Uh, Angie Hansen uh, is uh, my assistant director. She is Blood Manor woman, as yes. well as her epicness in films. Um, so, and I have people um, from um, Neil Young and um, Amy Belovacqua, who used to work for Penhurst uh, Asylum, oh. uh, Penhurst Haunted Attraction. And I mean, they, so to have that kind of level of people wow. coming in to help build the sets, you know it's going to be creepy epic. That's crazy. Now, okay, so if people want to find out about Yield and what's going on, where do they look? All right, you can go on Facebook. 
Yield, the horror movie. Look it up, it's there. I also have the Indiegogo campaign coming up. If you sign up now, before it goes live, you can save up to 50% on some of the perks. One of the perks is being able to say you're a producer on the film, an IMDB credit of a producer quality. Wow. So you get to save 50% off that. Plus I have a bunch of packages where uh, Rusty Gilligan has artwork going up. Um, Jim Crott has um, pictures that'll be signed. There's shirts, there's items that were in the movie that you can buy and have your own replica of so uh, if you go to Indiegogo and look for yield horror movie you'll see that you sign up and boom you'll get an email going hey it's live you get these secret codes wow. for special secret discounts on a bunch of the perks as well that nobody else gets once it goes live and you haven't signed up so make sure you look on Facebook Make sure you look on Indiegogo, and make sure you look for me. <laughs> and also, because if people want to look up you, any of your other books, where do they go? Okay, my name is Loren Malloy, L-O-R-E-N-M-O-L-L-O-Y. You can find me on Facebook, Loren Malloy Official. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram, Loren, lowercase Malloy. You can find me on Twitter, at Loren Malloy. You can find my books at bit.ly backslash books by Loren. Oh. And you can find me at any con you want to see me at. Make sure you tell your horror conventions and conventions to hire Loren Malloy. I'll be there. We could party at the VIP hour. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, and it is a party with you. It really is. Life's too short not to party. Amen. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, baby girl. I love I love being on your show. It's the best. Yay! Happy horrors! Loren Malloy. <laughs>